So I've been doing a lot of writing recently and um, I thought, why not show you how, how, the, how it happens, what I'm doing during these days. Um, this is where I come when I'm stuck. Um, I come out here because it's like suddenly open and I can just like free my mind from whatever I'm stuck in there. So this is like my kind of freedom room where I can yell and shout and scream. But come with me in here and I'll show you. It's incredibly messy because um, I made a decision quite early on that mess uh, is not bad for the soul, mess is good for the soul. Mess says you don't have to be perfect. Um, and this, uh, this I guess is where I spend quite a lot of time. Um, just the idea, 20 years on from when I started singing, that I would have one of these beautiful microphones in my top room is just extraordinary to me. For a long time, I was very polite as a singer. I still have a tendency to be quite polite. And the best thing about having a room where no one really can hear, apart from those, the slightly strange character who um, <laughs> occasionally does exercises and watches through the window. So I'm, I'm getting a curtain because um, I don't want any rear window stuff happening. So this is the room where I don't have to be polite. And another person who helps me on that journey is this lady here. She's called the Black Drink Singer and I painted her. Um, it's about the one, uh, it's probably the second painting I've done. I did one of a goldfinch at school when I was like 12. She's sitting next to Barbara Hepworth. Um, we went to St Ives this summer. I thought actually working with your voice is not that different to making a sculpture. Like it's very physical and Barbara Hepworth talks amazingly about the physicality of sculpture and how you have to bring out the sh you know, bring out your idea with the material you're working with and it's so the same with the voice I think. I was thinking about women finding their, carving their space, female artists, you know, carving their space to feel safe, to create whatever they want to create. And I remembered when I did a show about Peggy Lee, there was a brilliant story about her going into the studio, really overwhelming studio with like a hundred orchestral players and, you know, probably all men. And there's just this story of Peggy Lee climbing up onto a chair above the orchestra and there's a microphone coming from here and she just gets that relationship with the microphone so that she can just whisper in her in the way that she did so brilliantly and it's like that's just an amazing metaphor for me about finding your voice amidst the the rabble it's not about like fighting them it's just about finding that little safe space um and there can be as much mess as you like around it the rest of the place as long as you've just got that tiny space that's yours, that where you feel okay to explore whatever it is you are exploring. <laughs> um, I like it up here. I think I might put a microphone from the ceiling. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for coming into my room.